Here we are, folks. It's Beano Black, and uh, yes, for people that do ask, we have no color because we're looking at the actual satellite pictures. Lots of color gets added to a lot of NASA satellite pictures. Now there are possibly there are some straight up color shots, but the idea that most of this is dull and gloomy. But this is truthful, folks. Here is the asteroid belt. Check this grouping we have here close to Earth. This is all Earth, folks. We're not looking at the sun. I have showed you a lot of sun shots. Maybe by the end of this one there could be a sun shot. I don't know. This is like, this is the 26th today, 10-26, 2011, and this is at 6.45 Zulu time. Uh, actually, let me check here. Yeah, 6.04 and 45 seconds Zulu time, folks. This is what this one's from. Close object to the earth and I'll give you some data here in a second you can read it but I want you to pay attention and keep an eye on asteroid and Oort cloud and also either the idea that check the mass of the Oort cloud out or the idea that if they're covering more of this up with some kind of covering maybe but it really just basically straight out looks natural I've never really seen anything covered up on these shots before this is from uh, uh, one of our satellites, I can give a little hint, Alabama, and it's not the name of it, but it's one of the cities in Alabama, and it's a satellite that's named after it. And it's military or NASA or government satellite that they don't talk about. You're not going to just go find it. I don't think you can find that one. I'm not going to waste my time. But if you can find a satellite with the city of Alabama, and I'm not going to mention what city because it's a satellite, and its number is 01A, okay? So, yes, it's in Alabama named, and it starts with H. So, look for a city named that in Alabama, and it's 01A, okay? And this is actual satellite shot, and I'll hit play. You're going to see this close-up by object. I'll give the data, and this is the Oort cloud, and I don't really have a look to know whether to, because I don't see the sun, and we have these objects here also in this asteroid belt. This might be one of the smaller asteroid belts. This is smaller asteroid belt over here, and also Oort cloud with that. So, uh, let's hit play. Let you see it. I pause it there for a second. Here's play again, real fast. And there's that close object, folks. And all right, folks. Here is the data, and basically this is when it gets umped up. So it like take three minutes, and then they get the red data download. So there you go. There's the data and the uh, longitude, latitude and longitude, and the idea that, let me see how close this bugger got. I think it, let me see, looking at this here, it looks like it got 2.575 IU. That's quite a ways away. So, if that's true, or if the idea that this is the closest that it got was a 0 0.146 IU, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes because see I can't trust these keys compared to a JPL normal data it probably may ma match up but I can't guarantee that and I would just say that the one the 0 0.146 is as close as it got and the 2575 IU is where they picked it up at but I could be wrong on that maybe all it got was 2.575 IU which is quite a ways away showing you the idea that how far away the satellites are okay let me find another one this is all today of the 26 they're close by and there's like more than 22 of my counter earlier and I'll give you a new count in a minute quickly why I've got it up here we go with the very bright mass again that is over the earth now these are squared up so much that I don't think this is natural this may actually be some NASA or cover up here but this could be part of the asteroid. We'll le learn in the future going back to what they will show us again what we have now here that I've captured for you and show you. And here is the asteroid belt again or close objects to the earth back here. And no folks these are not cities in the United States all lit up. Okay, These are objects in outer space. Okay, uh, Here is also this bright object that we showed you in the last video I gave you here I believe I made it on the 25th or the 24th. Okay. And we have this very bright, and there's nothing on Earth that has that many square miles lit up, folks. Okay, so that is something in outer space in the asteroid belt that is close by that NASA says is not close by, 
or it's a reflection of one of the supergiants. So I presume this to be directly across from, again, more than likely, this should be the south pole down here. But then since we get 24 hours of sunlight during the winter down in Antarctic, maybe that is... But then what was the other job that we had the other day that we thought was the sun down over here over basically should have been over New Mexico. And then the idea that would put the 24 hours of daylight at the North Pole instead of the South Pole. So the idea that this should be somehow misconstrued position on the satellite and the idea this should be the Antarctic with 24 hours of daylight in certain areas down there. Okay, 24 hours in Antarctica folks. Yes, we have the 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 days in Alaska and up in the the Northwest Territories that has daylight during the uh, I think it's during the the summertime, not the winter. So during the winter time down in Antarctica, it gets almost a clear 24 hours of sunlight. You can check and research it. Okay, so we need to figure out what that mass is. Okay. This is from a photo that I snapped off of the today's coverage here. Okay. Okay. So this is what that shot was from. You have the atmos atmospheric position. Okay, folks. I had to cut and come back, but here you go. There is the quadrant. The north is on the very top here. West, east. Uh, there's your latitude. I mean, your longitude and your latitude. Latitude 31 plus 05. And we get a lot of these objects crossing that area. So, way out in the space, but that's where they go over. Okay, and hang on a second here. And here you go, you get the frame time, length along the trail, trail offset, and kilometers. So, And also, folks, I'm trying to keep the satellites down, so the idea that you guys probably know this site, anybody that's been on a lot, but we'd want to keep it under a hat so as much as we can so we keep on getting this. But remember that they don't want to let us know the mass, but you can see by your eyeballs, truthful of the data, that when you see them next to the Earth, they're not small objects, okay? No one's messing with your depth perception on your eye vision, okay? And these satellites are way out in space looking back at Earth, okay? And they don't want to let you know how big the masses are, and you can see the differentiating sizes of all these objects. All right, folks, and if we get closer, I'm panning through the data. There's 19 of them, and I have to click on them and window each one. So the idea of the closest AU we had today was this eccentric and this eccentric. 1.032 AU and eccentric should have been the closest, I believe. Otherwise, why do they give us an AU? And it's notice how they don't put AU behind it not to scare anybody. So no matter what, this is how close that object should have gotten before it left its orbit around Earth. Okay, so that's how close that the stuff is getting to Earth. Okay, uh, velocity on that. Look at the velocity in from kilo miles a second. 3.649 kilomiles a second. This wasn't moving as fast as we've seen some that are up to like 100 kilomiles an hour. And oh, I forget how many kilomiles a second they're moving out at. Something like 76 kilomiles a second or something, or 105 kilomiles a second we've seen in the last few weeks and so forth and so on. And as you can see, when they have this for AU also, so the idea that that pretty much probably is the closest AU that it got, the E. Uh, could be the tail too. Uh, the idea that we do have this AU here, quadrant alpha, quadrant parameter, param, parameter, quadrant parameter. I believe that would stand for uh, 0.093 AU plus than this. But no matter what, we also know that the idea that this was the closest AU from the idea that we have this AU here. So no matter what. It got that close. Okay, so we'll see if anything was closer than that today. Hang on a minute. 
Okay, folks, we found a closer one, and I'm going to show you a movie on it. And here we go. We got under the one AU. We got 0 0.805 AU, okay? And then the idea that if it got hecka close, those other ones on their tails got closer, from what I can see. From what I can see, that they, when they show you an E, that should be the tail. That's as close as the tail gets. So some of those other ones that are a little bit farther out, their tail gets even closer. And it would make sense. Okay, so I would say that no matter what we know for A and E on our other JPL actions, that the idea of the E is the eccentric or the idea that is where the tail gets closest to the earth. So this actually has a little bit of farther away tail, but as you will see with your eye view, this is going to look like a lot bigger comet. It was one of the ones that I picked out from looking at the photo stills, so the idea that you can sure see that it's a bigger comet, asteroid, because it doesn't really become an asteroid until the idea that when it... Well, it's asteroid belt, I guess, because the idea, they say asteroid belts, right? So if we have asteroid belts, those are asteroids out there. So these things are not as small as the asteroids when they burn up going through the atmosphere and get real small. And we see these little asteroids that are expensive, you know, space material. So uh, this is a very close AU, and let's take a look at the pictures, the movie. Okay, here we go folks. There is the object frozen and I will go to and as you can see the tail Somewhat there and it'll look a lot larger and there's where it got frozen in the box uh, I'll hit play here real fast. Let's see if I can get play to come up with. There's no really secret this was New Mexico skies You might be able to find that one It's like a university connection So basically this will be going more than likely from the east to the west or no from west to east this will be going west to east looking at earth as you, if you're looking at north america it should be west to east as it's flying over the earth but the idea that this should be a view from new mexico even though the idea that it is a satellite it's the idea that it's a satellite that's got a telescope and also because you see this closer view over New Mexico. So the idea that we will go back to it and the idea that this should be going west to east, the comet or asteroid material, and then the idea that north and south should be where the idea is so we should be able to nail down where our north and south pole are. They should be correct. So the idea that that brightness is at the north pole that we keep on seeing and not at the Antarctic okay so as you see here folks this is one of the larger because we're looking at Earth okay and as you can see you can see the Oort cloud on the shadows here overshadowing Earth okay so there are Oort clouds up there okay and the idea that this is it going by on the other satellite view on the back side this is the other one which I wasn't going to hide from you. It's a norm, New Mexico satellite. Now, maybe that New Mexico satellite's all only, but usually, normally, that New Mexican satellite is a university granted. I don't think it's fully funded, but the idea that it's a very big connection between NASA, the government, and I think the University of New Mexico, or one of the universities in New Mexico, and the idea that it is. I could be wrong on that, doesn't matter. I have a disclosure at the end. So, the idea that this is the south pole down here this is west to east and the idea that that from that one that up there that's shadowed which more than likely is this from a different satellite shot so there's that brightness again folks and because there is it highlighted in this satellite shot this is a different satellite and there it is on its trajectory down there okay and yes, certain satellites can filter through clouds. Nothing can hide from the eye in the sky. Rain, sleet, snow, space objects, cloud orts. And there you go. Satellites see everything, folks. So we'll put the disclosure on the end of this, and maybe I'll make another video tonight. And Okay, folks, pay attention to this triangulation right here, because it's more than likely either Elenin or her sister or brother or cousin or whatever. And the idea that you've seen the data on this, it's really close to Earth. Okay. I'm going to hit play, and then the close object was. So very closely, folks, this is probably the Phoenix Fire God, and you can go back and freeze it. Uh, frozen right there for you, and over that triangulation that we think that we've pretty much always been Ellen in. 
It's over in New Mexico today. There you go. There's the time. UTC Zulu. Okay, disclosure and basically this is